Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a leak code problem called longest subsequence repeated k times. It sounds a little tricky, but don't worry, we're going to break it down into simple, easy to understand pieces. Let's get started. So here's the task. We're given a string which we'll call s and a number k fivl. We need to find another string, let's call it our answer, with a special property. If we take our answer string and repeat it k times, that new, super long string has to be a subsequence of our original string s. A subsequence just means all the characters appear in s in the same order, but not necessarily next to each other. Our main goal is to find the longest possible answer string that works. And if there's a tie for the longest, we need to pick the one that's lexicographically largest, which basically means the one that would appear last in a dictionary. Let's look at this example to make things clearer. The string s is let's leak code, and k is 2. Let's test the candidate let. If we repeat it twice we get let's let. Can we find the characters of let let inside let's leak code in the right order? Let's see. We can find the first let, and then the second let. Yes, it works. Now what about another candidate like et? Repeating it twice gives et. We can find that in let's leak code too. So both let and et are valid answers, and they both have a length of 3. The tiebreaker rule says we need the lexicographically largest one. In a dictionary, let comes after et, so let is our final answer. Okay, so how do we even begin to solve this? Trying every possible subsequence of s would be way too slow. The secret is a crucial clue hidden in the problem's constraints. A rule states that k multiplied by 8 is greater than the length of the string s. Now let's think about what that means. If our answer string had a length of, say, 8, and we repeated it k times, the total length of that new string would be 8 times ksa. But wait, that's already longer than s itself, so it's impossible for that to be a subsequence. This tells us something amazing. The answer we're looking for must be pretty short. Its length has to be 7, or 6, or something smaller. This shrinks our search space dramatically. Here's another powerful idea. Imagine our potential answer is ab, and k is 3. For this to be valid, the string ababab must be a subsequence of s. This means our original string s has to contain at least 3 a's and at least 3 b's somewhere inside it. We can generalize this into a rule. Any character we want to use in our final answer must appear at least k times in the original string s. This is a fantastic filter. We can immediately throw away any letters from the alphabet that don't meet this condition. We only need to build our answer from this small set of hot characters. So our strategy is a kind of smart brute force search. First, we find our hot characters. Then, we'll use a queue to systematically build and check all possible answers made from these characters. We start by putting an empty string in the queue. Then, we enter a loop. We pull a candidate from the queue, and for that candidate we try creating new, longer candidates by tacking on each of our hot characters. We'll try them in reverse alphabetical order, Z, then Y, and so on. Every time we create a new candidate that works, we update our best answer so far, and add it back to the queue, because we might be able to extend it even more. Because of the order we're exploring, the very last valid answer we find, is guaranteed to be both the longest and the lexicographically largest. Alright, here is the Python code that implements our strategy. I know it can look a bit intimidating at first, but we're going to walk through each key part so it makes perfect sense. First, let's look at this small helper function. Its job is simple. Check if a candidate string is valid. It takes a candidate, which we call sub. First, it creates the big target string by repeating sub k times. Then, it uses a neat Python trick with iterators to check if every character in that target string can be found in our original string s in the correct order. If it can find all of them it returns true, otherwise it returns false. Next we prepare our palette of hot characters. This part of the code first counts the frequency of every character in the string s. Then, it creates a list called hot chars which only contains characters whose count was k or more. We also sort this list in reverse. This is important, because it means when we build our candidates, we'll naturally try letters like z before a, which helps us find the lexicographically largest result. This is the engine of our search. We initialize an empty string called ands, to hold our best answer so far. Then we create a queue, which is just a list where we add to one end and remove from the other. We started off by putting just one thing in it, an empty string. The while loop will keep running as long as there are potential candidates in our queue to explore. In each pass, we'll pull one candidate out to work with. Now, for the candidate we just pulled from the queue, we try to make it longer. We loop through our sorted list of hot chars. 
For each hot character, we create a new candidate called next by adding that character to the end of our current one. We then call our helper function to check if this new longer string is a valid subsequence. If it is, that's great. It becomes our new best answer. But we don't stop there. We add this new successful candidate back into the queue because we might be able to make it even longer in a future step. So how efficient is this approach? Well, the number of candidate strings we end up checking, which we can call x freeze, is actually quite small because the answer's length is limited to seven. For each of these candidates, we have to run our check function, which takes time proportional to the length of s, which we call nem. So the total time is roughly n times x priv. The memory we use is mostly for the queue, which stores these candidates. Since x is a small, manageable number, both our time and space are very reasonable. This is way, way better than trying every single possible subsequence. So let's quickly recap the main ideas. The first big aha moment was realizing a hidden constraint limits our answer's length to less than 8. This made the problem solvable. The second key was filtering our building blocks to only include hot characters that appeared enough times. Finally, we used a breadth-first search, powered by a queue, to explore all possibilities. By trying to add characters in reverse alphabetical order, we cleverly guided our search to find the longest and lexicographically largest answer automatically. And that's a wrap. I really hope this breakdown helped make the problem and its solution clearer. If you found this helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button and maybe subscribe for more explanations like this. If you have any questions or a different way to solve it, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, keep on coding, and I'll see you in the next one.